research and development engineer in Permandai. I'm very glad to be with uh, you guys to share with you experiences and uh, ideas about VR. I would like to start with a personal experience. Okay, once I, uh, once I became financially stable, I decided to make a certain investment in an apartment or a house or anything. So I started contacting realtors and I started uh, searching online. And the only data I was provided with was floor plans and maybe the surface area of the apartment. But how on earth would I be able to imagine how big or small is a 200 meters or square meters apartment, let's say? Or uh, in this room, uh, let's say, what would fit? Would a bed fit here? Would a closet fit here? It took me like six months to be able to do this mapping or to be able to train my mind so that when I see a certain floor plan, I would be able to know if this uh, apartment is a candidate or it is not. So imagine that we had a certain tool, a certain magic wand that would save you several apartment visits, that would save you a lot of time and would immerse you inside the apartment so that you can really take and make this perception or imagine what you can really do with this apartment. I will show you a link. You are the first uh, guys to see this link. It's a still a prototype. This is the, our prototype for virtual tours. Okay, this is one of the houses. Okay, so here's a spot, let's say. You can go there. Okay. So now it's taking time, but actually I was waiting for it to take time because there's a point I want to make in a few slides. Okay, so what if we, had, we really had this tool? And this tool can be uh, improved into 3D viewing, into maybe having uh, some uh, dimensions. Maybe we can uh, improve it into augmented re reality and make some staging for the home, for the house, or maybe transform a floor plan into a 3D map, okay? So this would be really efficient. Okay, now I'll get back. Okay, so it loaded. Okay, so this, uh, this is a full view of the room and you can, turn, you can go from one room to another. Now I'll get back to the PowerPoint. This is ours, uh, F5, okay. Okay, we're done. Okay, now I'll give a, a bit of history about uh, virtual reality. Okay, in 1950, Morton Halleck had a vision about the experience theater, where you have something, some sort of theater, where you can view and experience with the, your five senses, most probably, uh, a certain experience or a certain scene or a certain game, whatever. So, in 1962, he built his first prototype, which is Sensorama, which is this thing here. Okay, so you are immersed inside the event or inside the scene. Okay, but what is interesting here is that all of this was imagined or prototyped or designed before we, uh, the, uh, the digital camera ever existed. The digital camera in, was invented in 1975. Now, uh, of course, virtual reality was developing at a, at a fast rate, kind of. In 2007, Google introduced uh, the Google Street View. Every, uh, you must know the, uh, the app where you can go, uh, you can view uh, some streets, some, uh, like, it's virtual tourism. Okay, in 2010, it's what the, we had the first prototype for Oculus Rift that our colleague discussed. In 2011, Dermandar's uh, first panorama app before uh, any panorama was uh, uh, integrated inside the phone camera. In 2014, f Facebook purchased uh, Oculus VR for $2 billion. Uh, Google Cardboard and HTC Vive and all. Now we are uh, talking, we are, uh, research is going on to binaural audio and 3D audio. 2017, the VR kit was launched, our product. Okay, now I'll go the, uh, through this very fast because uh, it was already discussed somehow. Okay, so what are the technologies used in VR? Of course, we need the VR headset, which uh, uses mainly the sight, 
Okay, it's good. Oh, the, we can also trigger some vibrations, so the touch sense is also uh, triggered. We, uh, of, of course, we, had, uh, we have earphones and binaural uh, uh, audio. Now uh, the smartphone dig deep inside, the, inside VR, and now we have smartphones designed and VR ready in terms of GPU and screens and resolution. Okay, uh, in smartphones, of course, we need the gyroscope and the motion sensor to be able to track the motion of the user. Okay, and the, the, we all know the evolution of the uh, screens and uh, And finally, we need, of course, fast and lightweight GPU. Okay, now what we need to produce VR, we may need uh, omnidirectional cameras or 360 cameras. Uh, th this may be a rig where we, uh, where we place cameras around a certain axis. Okay, and we have rendering softwares for architectural designs like uh, uh, Autodesk and etc. Okay, now this is what I wanted to reach. We need time to adapt. First, uh, half of the people are not really ready to be able to, uh, to use VR or to be able to learn how to use VR. So it needs a, li a little bit of time. Second, technology needs time. I wanted to show you a simple uh, virtual tour and it took time to load. Now what about if you wanted to do 360 streaming, live streaming? Is the bandwidth enough? Is the, uh, the, 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 techno the, techno the hardware that we have, is it enough? The resolution of the screen. Uh, when, we were, when we were in uh, the, the NAB show in Las Vegas, uh, many said that uh, we, the resolution is not enough. But the limitation was not our video, the limitation was the display. And if the display is not ready, uh, we cannot, do, you know, we need, it needs time. We need to go with the market, with the technology. We cannot go faster than the technology. Now, uh, I know you must be curious about Diamond Dial and its journey in technology. So I'll give the speech. To, uh, so I'll give the speech to Abdel Majid. Okay. Hello everybody. My name is Abdel Majid. I am a project manager in Dermandar. We started our journey in Dermandar by creating a tool that allows to stitch multiple images in one wide image called Panorama. Uh, we started creating a web application tool because at that time there was no tool to download apps from stores. Uh, no App Store, no Google Play. It was very early to, to use it and people wasn't prepared to this. So we created a flash tool that allows to take many images and stitch them and gives you the result. Uh, one, one of the difficulties was uh, there is multiple sources. We don't have any information about the camera that captured the images. Uh, we, we even don't know the field of view of them and we need to stitch the images and give a correct result. Another uh, reason uh, that it's difficult is uh, the color correction because when we talk about panorama, it should be continuous in the scene. It should be continuous in the exposure time, in the level of uh, details, etc. So we need a fixed focus, we need a fixed exposure time. And that's why this tool uh, was prepared to and launched in 2007. Then we thought that this tool should be portable and not limited to desktop. So we prepared ourselves to make a mobile application, and we launched the app in 2011. Uh, it's called DMD Panorama. Uh, it was launched for iOS before, and then for Android and Windows Phone. This application allows you to capture 360 panoramas. Uh, simply, I'm calling it 360 panoramas, but now we will see the difficulties of 360 panoramas. Uh, what challenges we have faced in DMD? So this is what we do and what the challenge is. Uh, first of all, uh, we have thought about automating the process of creating panorama. But automating the process of creating panorama is not something very easy. So to drive people to create panorama and how to let them move correctly to capture without introducing parallax. So it was very difficult to do it. And uh, we, we thought about it and we engineered a new method to capture them using sensors and uh, some, feature, some other features like image processing and other features. Uh, 
then we, we started talking about uh, competitors that, that we have uh, faced. While we are launching the MD Panorama, uh, some, manufacturer, some phone manufacturers put a built-in Panorama app inside their camera app. So they, there is already a Panorama app. So why we need Panorama now? Why we should continue making Panorama? Why we should continue the MD Panorama project? One of the reasons was because of the native camera allows to capture 270 degrees only and doesn't allow to capture 360 panorama. So we are not able to make a 360 full closed panorama unless we use DMD panorama. Nowadays, no built-in camera that allows to capture 360 panorama other than DMD. Uh, the other reasons, as, as I talked before, the color correction, so we faced new difficulties, which is the color correction method. We need to correct the, the stitching lines between two images in different conditions. So if you put the exposure fixed at the start, for example, we will get a bad seam because it, should, it, could, it could be good at the starting point, but it's not good for another point in the panel, like in low light or high light. Uh, the other things is to, uh, to close the panorama as I talked and uh, to make it in a fast way. It's not a good idea to have uh, more time to stitch panoramas. That's why we have made, made it using GPU technology. So GPU, it's a technology that allows you to make processing for images in a fast way. Uh, Maybe, maybe in real time, so we can say in real time, and then go to make 720 degrees capture, which requires multiple panorama capture. So that's why we have made the 720 de degrees capture, uh, which requires to capture multiple panoramas and stitch them together. So either you can capture a 720 panorama by capturing multi-row multi panorama like this, then you go to the next level, then you go to the next level, and you g stitch all the images together. Or you use the new technology, what we have used in our app, uh, the VR kit, which is called FishEye. FishEye allows you to extend the field of view of your camera. So you can put a lens in your mobile and extend the field of view to any degree you want. It depends on the limits of the lens. So you can extend it, for example, for uh, 120 degrees, or uh, for example, 160 or 180. So we used 180 lens that's prepared for us. It's a, it's a lens that is made eventually for the VR kit. <coughs> yes, yes. It's a DMD engine that's made uh, in 2011. And then we, we moved next to uh, HDR problem. For real estate, it's not, it's not good to capture panorama and don't see the details outside and inside. So when you have a low light inside and high light outside, the panel would be very bad. So we created our own HDR algorithm and now we can say a demo for it. Uh, let's talk about the conclusions and uh, what we learned in DMD eventually. Uh, don't stop and keep trying, because when we started and uh, the store launched its own uh, Panorama app, we thought, why we should continue? We are giving more details, we are giving more, uh, more, more, uh, more added values to Panorama by making a 360 Panorama capture. It's not easy to close any Panorama, but by the way, even to to stitch them, it takes, for, for example, five minutes. So we are making it in real time, in mobile, uh, in a portable device that is mobile or even a built-in GPU anywhere. It can be in a camera, 360 camera. Uh, let's talk about what, what hardware what hardware we use. If, if, we not, if we want to make a project and it relies on hardware, don't go to this way un unless it's a vitally required thing because hardware is a hell. It's something very hard to make a hardware that's compatible with multiple phones and multiple devices. For example, we started launching the VR kit 
and then faced an issue that uh, when, when they launched phones with Bluetooth 5, Bluetooth 5 is not compatible with Bluetooth. Bluetooth 4, for example, was, and Note 5, uh, uh, sorry, uh, S8, uh, Note 8, was not working with the VR kit at the beginning. Then we updated our SDK to, to let it work. Uh, do it yourself, because when you buy an already exist hardware, it will be very difficult to match your requirement. So we designed our own lens to get more better field of view, more details, less distortion, and uh, launched uh, also our own rotator, which has more precise steps. Our rotator has 360 degrees, and uh, it rotates 360 degrees and 360 steps, but we need more precision just not to, to show the steps of, of movement. Uh, then we designed our own VR glasses that are prepared to match any interpopularity distance between the eyes. So just to get a comfortable scene in 3D. Uh, keep it stupid simple. It's just a simple, simple statement, but has a big meaning. Uh, always don't, don't go further. Uh, let's say, you know, don't, don't go uh, to make it complex. At the beginning, get, get a prototype, do it, convince yourself that it's good, then you can do whatever you want. At least, it, do it well engineered and easy to use, then you are you're having a good successful product. Merci. <laughs>